Hey, Rashad. All right, everybody. What's up? What's up? What's up? My name is Rashad Milligan. If you're new to the channel, this is the Roll the Podcast Subs. Mm. Excuse my voice right now. I got a cough drop in my in my mouth. Everything like that. Hey, yo. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I got a cough drop in my mouth right now. Uh, You know, just coming out a little cold, whatever. Do, do, do. Boom, boom, boom. But, but we back at it. Had some time. I know it's been a long time. I got a lot of footage dropping. Um, for people who come to the channel for you know a lot of the music stuff and, and uh, culture stuff and stuff like that that's coming out but I had to make sure I got my people my people straight first that's the basketball community I haven't spoken to y'all since the season started it's like every time I want to record a video it'd be a little late I uh, you know what I'm saying I we falling asleep this and that this and that so I just wanted to make sure when I came back I had my full attention I provided everything for you guys and a lot has unfolded uh, I wanted to make a video about LSU so that's what we're gonna do here as you see from the title uh, LSU is the main thing that we're gonna start off now it's a couple days later so a lot more people kind of know about the situation but if you don't you know kind of here's what's going on uh, we're gonna start off with uh, where are we gonna start off where are we gonna start off we gonna start off with Reverend Doctor. This is all from Twitter. Shout out to Twitter for the news. You know, I'm, I'm gonna give everybody their props throughout the video. Let's get it. So Reverend Doctor posted on Twitter a few hours ago. Um, Charmaine was talking about LSU and Angel Reese's suspension, and she said, you know, uh, she ain't like Mokey's uh, reason for it. <coughs> Excuse me. She said she didn't like Mulkey's reasoning for it because Mulkey said, you know what I'm saying, she's a part of the basketball team. We hope to see her sooner or later. She said, that's not a good enough response for me. That's not a good enough response for me. I need a full explanation on what's going on. Brody said that wouldn't happen with Coach Staley. And who liked it? Angel Reese's mama. Now, if uh, Angel Reese's mama has since gone, um, excuse me, let's go, private on, on Twitter ever since then. She's been in the news a lot lately this week. For a little back and forth they had with Fly J. Johnson. So for those of you who don't know, against Kent State in the second half earlier this week, Angel Reese did not play. She was benched. Kim Mulkey wouldn't give an explanation after the game. All right, so so those are the first two things, right? And then after that, you know, when people just trying to decide what's going on, out of nowhere, seemingly, it seemed like uh, Angel Reese mama posts this on social media shout out to the lord for posting this folks please do not send me long text messages with a bunch of grammatical errors it gives me a headache how do i know what you said if i if i don't even know what you're saying that's essentially what angel reese mom said so here come fly j mama coming back on her instagram story they deleted both of these once the lord posted this and this went viral man you definitely know about grammar errors when your daughter got a two point O or less GPA. In fact, when writing smart message, you didn't capitalize nor use any periods. And you know, she kind of goes on talking about being fake and stuff like that, uh, things of that nature. Alexis, excuse me, Alexis Morris got into it as well, you know, just saying like, huh, you know what I'm saying? Like, that karma is real, it's gonna come back to you. You switch up on people or something like that for attention, for your sake, for marketing, you know, for this money and, and things like that. Angel Reese is in the top 10 for NIL uh, earners among all college sports, male or female, according to ON3. She's at number seven uh, at 1.7 million. And then Fly J. Johnson's right below that at number 20 with 1.1 million. You know, she has a distribution deal with Rock Nation in addition to some of the other uh, things she has, like the Puma deal, things like that. Uh, Angel Reese is signed to Reebok and uh, things of that nature. <clears throat> it's been pretty much on, excuse me every magazine cover this off season uh gino davo sweeney like it's a few coaches and on the college level that were just kind of scared of these things happening when nll and money gets into it when you know these um you know what i'm saying these athletes are making millions of dollars because you know the girl that just committed earlier this week excuse me to south carolina um that lsu was fighting over um you know Apparently, LSU offered her $3.1 million through NIL. So if they offered her that, just imagine what Haley Van Lith and Anissa Murrow got for going to LSU. You know what I'm saying? So it, uh, I say all that to say, like, the money is real here. 
and when money gets involved you know what i'm saying people going to be you know hogging shots or thinking about brand deals and thinking about commercial they're like are they going to be mature enough to handle this my response to that was well if these if these women were men they were already being the league one and done you know what i'm saying 19 20 21 years old fly jay's 20 angel reese is probably 21 22 you know what i'm saying uh you know these women young women are the age Haley van lip's been in the, in, in college for a couple years she's probably 21 you know what i'm saying uh anisa morrow same thing you know what i'm saying so uh these women are the ages of young professionals on the men's side of things so this is what they would have to deal with if they were men in the first place so you know what i'm saying so so you have to look at that as well i think i say all that to say they are old enough to be thrown in these situations with millions of dollars and teammates getting millions of dollars anyway let's get to this <clears throat> excuse me uh <clears throat> i'll say all that to say like it it just seems like kind of just a mess at lsu and it's just the beginning of the season. I think LSU is going to put it together. I think they have enough talent to put it together. In that game against Kent State where Angel Reese set out the second half, Fla J did the, you know, D-Wade, LeBron thing with uh, Michaela Williams on the handoff three, on the dump off three. Michaela Williams had 42 points in the game, you know, so so salute to her. Uh, but, yeah, man, like, uh, I say that to say, I forgot where I was going with it. Oh, yeah, LSU just has so much going on. Even the first game, I believe they're five and one now. The five games, the five wins have been against like mid-major or less talent. Uh, you know, respect to all those opponents, but that's just reality of situation. The one actual ranked opponent they played, Colorado, the uh, the home opener, they lost by 14 points. Now in the game, it just looked like, you know, the team was trying to figure it out. It was kind of too jumbled between Anissa Murrow and Angel Reese on the floor at the same time. Anissa Murrow eventually moved to the bench. I like that move from Kim Mulkey just because it was like, it just seemed like they were just taking up too much space together. They kind of have the same game, kind of face up, mid, mid range on in, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like just dominating the paint or whatever, getting into the paint, post moves, you know, things of that nature. But their game is like kind of face up, mid range and, you know, into the, into the basket. It just clogs it up. Haley Van Lith, she needs the ball in her hands. Angel Reese needs the ball in her hands. Anissa Murrow needs the ball in her hands. Fly J needs the ball in her hands as well and so does Michaela Williams but Fly J I feel like has played the best in learning her uh learning her role kind of within the team within the offense and I think she did a great job of that her freshman season and she's kind of doing more of that this year as well I want to go back to this uh I put out this video in like May when Anisha Morrow first went went there and I said exactly what I told you guys there's one ball and I'm concerned about how long it's going to take for them to kind of get it going and, and kind of figure things out, things of that nature. And here was the comment section. Y'all kill me for this, man. Kim is their coach. Don't forget LSU had nine new players this season and Kim know how to make it work. She'll figure this out too. She's not new to this. Y'all talking like, <laughs> and respect, respect to everybody that was new on the team last year. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so salute to everybody on the team, you know what I'm saying, from from the championship team. Got to respect the champions. But y'all talking like a lot of these role players and a lot of these people who helped contribute to the championship run. Shout out to Jasmine Carson. Shout out to the Alexis Morris. Shout, shout out to, you know, those type of players. Shout out to Katari Poole. Shout out to, um, you know what I'm saying, shout out to uh, LaDasia, uh, you know, things of that nature. Shout out to all of them, for real, uh, for adding to it. And kind of building that championship culture around the Tigers last season. Y'all acting like those type of role players and, and people who've helped out are the same level as these all American, five star, best player in the country type players like a Michaela Williams, like a Haley Van Lith, like a Anissa Morrow. It's not the same thing. These are people who didn't just do it in high school, they did it at the college level. Uh, I mean, except for Michaela Williams, who is just, you know, number one player in the country, one of the number one top players in the country. You know, you go back and forth with Full Valley on that one. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's not the same thing. It's a different level of star power. It's a different level of isolation basketball. It's a different level of just dribble domination within the offense. So, you know what I'm saying? So, it's a different thing. And I want to read this because I want to hold y'all accountable, man. Let's read some of these. Here we go. Where we at? Where we at? There's someone, shout out Wonderland, showing me some love there. 
Malaysia and Jelani were absolutely amazing in this game. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shout, shout out to Overtime. Shout out Overtime is always showing love. You clearly do not understand how Kim Mulkey manages a team. You must not have followed LSU during last season. Are you aware that Alexis Morris was the only starter that was a scholarship holdover from the previous season's team? Flaje Johnson and Samaya Smith were incoming freshmen. Last year, uh, Poe po was a Juco. Uh, tier, tier Poe. Tier Poe was a Juco edition, excuse me. Angel Reese, Ladeja Williams, uh, Katari Poole, and Jasmine Carson were Power 5 additions through the transfer portal. I think each of those players clearly understood what their role was. Otherwise, Iowa would be national champions. How's it looking through six games so far? That, that's all I'm going to How's it looking through six games so far? That's all I'm going to say. Thank you, Rhonda, for the comment, though. Six months, I, I didn't respond to this. Van Lith already knows how to play off the ball. All right. We got receipts. That's a beautiful part about the internet. We got receipts here. Uh, Haley Van Lith through, through six games so far is averaging 11 points and um, four and a half assists. That's what she's doing through, through six games so far. Angel Reese hasn't played in a game and a half. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So there's more shop opportunities for her and stuff like that. You got Michaela Williams, but Michaela Williams at the end of the day, yes, yeah, she still is a freshman. Haley Van Lith has proven that she can play at an All-American uh, type level for the past three years. I'm I'm just throwing that out there. I'm just throwing that out there. Van Lith knows how to play off the ball. She has already played with another point guard. She had to share the ball. The only time she got the ball in a ball dominant type of situation was very close to uh, end out games if the shot clock was running out because she was very good one on one. She's basically a closer. But during most of the game, she played with the team in the structure. One of the reasons I think she came to LSU is, I think, to have the ball in her hands even more. That is not what's going on. That is not what's going on. <laughs> and um, shout out to, to MSL5253, who says, yeah, uh, Kim Mulkey's going to have Haley, ideally, at the PG position to have Flaje or Michaela at either other guard position. Both of them are starting. I think Michaela's kind of like three and don't really matter. It's kind of positionless basketball, honestly. But yes, Angel got her own shot. She'll be fine. Come on, bro. Seriously, you're talking about a Kim Mulkey led team. You know she has a plan. I love to see it. I love to see it. This is exactly what I wrote. LOL. Kim is their coach. I love to see it. You forgot to mention Kayla Williams. Unless you didn't know this, forgot about her, which is perfectly fine. LOL, she won queen of the court. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said this. Yeah, Michaela Williams wasn't there. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, anyways. Uh, okay, baby, 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 baby. <laughs> N-I-L-S-U, N-I-L-S-U. You did a shot. Thanks again. Thank you, Smith. It's funny how everybody is praying on their downfall. Me not praying on their downfall. It's just a common sense thing. If you have multiple all American type players, people who come from the programs where they run their programs literally on a collegiate division one major program level, power five conference level. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it doesn't take that long to gel. But through six games is looking like we still, you know what I'm saying? It's still you know, yeah, everybody got the same same opinion. Angel Reese wasn't the focal point. Uh, Angel Reese wasn't the focal point. Whoever was the hot scorer was at the focal uh, was the focal point. Before you post a video, do your research. You and Heavy Set White Dude are hilarious. Shout out to Bailey Caldwell, my brother. That is still that's still my boy. Still my boy Bailey. If you if you watching this, I love you, brother. Uh, you and Heavy Set White Dude are just jealous and hating. Oh, and Kim Mulkey's a pretty good coach. I trust she knows what to do. Also, you think these players coming in know this already? You think Morrow doesn't know Reese's game? Haley Van Niven knows she has a point. It doesn't have to be the uh, score. Research first, bruh. LSU will haul the rest of the conference and will choke in March just like the Gamecocks. Go UConn Huskies. That's funny. Shout out to the UConn fans. But yeah, I just, I just want to pull up some receipts. That's the beauty, beauty of the internet. You know what I'm saying? It kind of stands forever. It, so it, it was a couple of y'all, but it was a couple of people. I ain't going to lie that they had my back and it was offending me in the comments. I appreciate y'all as well. You know what I'm saying? But I just wanted to revisit that. You know, I, I ain't bring it up in a couple months. Y'all know I read comments on here. I mean, I, I, I don't read all the comments in real time as they come in. But on a lot of the times I read the comments, I'll put it in the video reading comments. But anyways, uh, yes, that's LSU. So 
like I said, I think they're going to pull it together. I think they're going to figure it out. <laughs> but it's just like I told you. So it's going to take a minute to figure it out and to put it together. And they got the, you know, the cupcake schedule just to make a pun on, on their pun from last season. Cupcake schedule to figure it out and some time to figure it out. Anyways, let's shout out some people before we get out of here around the horn. Uh, shout out to Michaela Williams, man. Averaging 20 points. Like I said, that 42 point game. Uh, you know, uh, things like that. She had 20 against uh, Mississippi Valley as well. And uh, double figures pretty much in most of these games. You know, she had, uh, yeah, yeah, double figures in most of these games, except for this one game. I believe that was like, what, like Brooklyn? Yeah, yeah, Queens, Queens University. So I never heard, I didn't even know there was a Queens University, but I'm not a New York guy, I'm a Southern guy, so, you know. Uh, but yes. Double digits in all of these games, um, 20 points against Mississippi Valley, the 42 against Kent State, and the 17 against ranked opponent Colorado. She looked really good. These freshmen are looking so good, man. Salute to this freshman class. I had no idea they would come out come out swinging like this for real, for real. Shout out to Malaysia Full Valley, man. Doing the hold on, hold on. I, I got y'all gotta see me doing this. Shout out doing the hey, you just looking like Circus Ole out there, man. Malaysia Full Valley is like, she got the ball on the string. You can tell she was dribbling that ball her entire life. She got the trainer. Shout out, salute to whoever her trainer is, man. They got her right, man. She doing this and this. And as a fresh, hee <laughs> hee. Crazy. Shout out to Malaysia Full Valley. All right, let's keep, let's keep going with the, with the shout outs, man. Let's keep going with the shout outs before we close out, before we close out. Uh, Hannah over there, the freshman and Notre Dame hooping. 26 points, five rebounds a game, five assists a game. She getting them steals too. She had six steals in the last game and a win over uh, Illinois, bro. Swiper no swiping. She's averaging no, 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 no. I'm tripping. I'm tripping, right? I'm. Tri She's averaging seven steals a game. Olivia Miles hasn't come back yet. Hey, Notre Dame's gonna be. You know what I'm saying. They got blown out that first game against South Carolina, but you know what I'm saying? With, uh, with, with my dog, Son Sonia. Is Sonia healthy? I believe Sonia is healthy. Let, let, let's go look at something. Hold on. Let's go look at something. I want to see if Sonia is healthy. <coughs> Excuse me. Because <coughs> if Sonia is healthy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let me see some stats. Let me see some stats. Because you got Sonia, Hannah, and then bring in Olivia back into the mix. Man, we looking at something. Yeah, Sonya's healthy. She just played against Northwestern. Let me see this Illinois game. I, I clicked on Illinois' page. But, yes, yes, I mean, I don't know. I feel like, you know, Notre Dame can put it together and have a pretty decent team. You know what I'm saying? Have a pretty decent team and put together a good fight when it comes to March, when it comes to, uh, you know, March Madness, everything like that. Uh, Sonya, did she play last game? She ain't played last game. Okay. Sonia, you where what's going on? What's going on? Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me see what's going on with Sonia. <coughs> Figuring this out in real time. Uh Sonia. <coughs> Excuse me. She played. She played. Why didn't I see her? She had twenty three. I missed her in the box score. But anyways, uh yeah, Sonia is averaging twenty and four and two herself. So salute to Sonia. But like I said, with with those three, you know, kind of at the core, at the center of everything for Notre Dame, I think they are a team to watch out for in uh, the postseason. Shout out to Raven Johnson. Like I said, Hollywood, Atlanta zone, Atlanta great, Atlanta legend, Raven Johnson, Hollywood, uh, leading leading the nation in assists with 10.7 assists. Uh, she said she's been taking notes of what everybody was saying to her last year in the tournament when, you know, they were daring her to shoot and she was scared to shoot the ball in the tournament, man. She's not scared to shoot anymore. She's not scared to lead the team. She's here to take her spot. Uh, red shirt, sophomore now. You know what I'm saying? Third third year in college. Second year playing. Uh, and she's doing what, you know, Don brought her in to do. Number two player in the country right behind AZ Foot. And she's living up to those expectations. Love to see it. I love to see South Carolina play the way that they're playing. Number one team. They took it over like this. Hot from six to one. Like, what? It's crazy. Ridiculous. Speaking of, shout out to Camilla Cardoso. She killed it in the first game against Notre Dame. She's been a beast this year, uh, averaging a double double, 15 and 11, nearly 16 and 12. You know what I'm saying? She's doing what she has to do. Uh, you see three blocks right there in the last game against South Dakota State. Let me see what she's averaging this season. 
uh, with blocks. I think she's averaging, yeah, she's averaging three blocks through the first three games. So salute to Cardoso as well. On the West Coast, man, you know we got a shot at the freshman. Juju Watkins, speaking of the freshman, oh my goodness. 23 points, 28 points a game, seven rebounds, three assists. I watched that first game. She did everything. And we knew we knew Juju was going to be tough. If you've been watching the channel, you see me react to Juju back at Sierra Canyon. You see me watch Juju in person when I was at Sierra Canyon a couple years ago. She's legit. We knew we knew what she was going to do. Did I know it was going to be this soon? Oh, no, nah, I ain't going to lie to you. But she's killing, man. She's killing. She's killing, dude. Had 32 in, in, her, in her debut. Uh, I think she, like, either broke or, like, no, no, no. She just had more points than Lisa Leslie, so she broke it. Lisa Leslie had 30. She had 32. She scored at the, like, the last second to get the 32. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. Anyway, shout out to Juju. Got 35 in the last game. Nine rebounds, six steals. Ridiculous. Joker putting on a show, man. Joker putting on a show. And then, you know, you got the other team in that, like, UCLA doing their thing. I believe they're, like, number three right now. And it's all led by Lauren Betts. Lauren Betts, Kiki. He, you know, uh, y'all you know Kiki Rice's family on the channel as well. Salute to Kiki Rice. I hope you're doing well. I hope the family is well. 19 and a half points, 11 rebounds. And Lauren Betts, a younger sister, just committed to the program, man. UCLA, one of them teams that, you know what I'm saying? I remember it was a couple years ago I had, uh, who I have on the channel? Uh... My dog from ESPN, Tarika Foster Brasby. I had Tarika Foster Brasby on the channel a couple of years ago, and she was saying, I think a lot of times we sleep on Stanford literally because they're on the West Coast and we're asleep when their games are on. Lauren Betts, we got to talk about the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know I'm a Southern dude and everything like that. I'm on the East Coast, but I had to show love to the West Coast, you know, and make sure we don't sleep on them, give them that attention. So when March comes, we not, oh, where UCLA come from? Yeah. Nah, they, they've been doing this. And it's all started with uh, Lauren Betts and Kiki Rice. So salute to UCLA. Paige Beckers, congratulations on returning to basketball. I'm so proud and happy for the game of basketball to have Paige Beckers back. Nearly averaging 20 points a game, five rebounds and three assists. Um, she's doing what she has to do. And yeah, man, it's sad. Oh, well, okay. This is very telling, too. This is very telling. UConn's got a game against Minnesota. That's very telling uh, in terms of, is it is it at Minnesota? Yeah, it's at Minnesota. Hey, I'm out. Uh, that's very telling. Y'all know Gino, he does the thing for the seniors, the people that last season, stuff like that, where they go to, you know, the um, they go to their hometown and stuff like that on the road to, like, let them play in front of their home crowd. Excuse me. <coughs> think that's very telling on whether or not Paige Pickers is going to stay this year. I'll leave it at that. Anyways, let's get back into it. Um, UConn, as far as that, that loss against uh, NC State, first of all, salute to Sanaya Rivers and NC State getting it done. NC State's got a very solid team, bro. Um, with Madison Hayes from, from Mississippi State, she transferred there last year and stuff like that. He's just got a solid group of players over there at NC State. And it was nice to see uh, Rivers, like, just do her thing. Shine. She had, like, I think, like, 32 in, in, that, in that win against uh, UConn. So, salute to the NC State for what they did. I was talking to uh, a specific UConn fan. He told me not to mention his name anymore. But I want to give him that credit and say I was talking to a UConn fan um, about this. And, you know, before I just used kind of, like, what – their take on the situation and stuff from a UConn fan's perspective and then you know like try to make it seem like it's my own but it's really from them uh and they point they brought up the good point of you know the players like like uh um like AZ and the players like um Aaliyah Edwards they have to learn how to adjust to not being the focal point of the offense anymore and having the ball in their hands and stuff like that now it's Paige's team again you know Paige is back so they have to have that a little adjustment period at the beginning of the season I think they're going to figure it out and put it together at the end of the year, uh, come postseason time, and they'll be one of those uh, Final Four contending teams. You know, that, that will happen. It's just kind of like something that's always automatic with them. Speaking of AZ, uh, prayers are for AZ and her, like, mental health. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Angel Reese. You know, people say, like, you know, salute to her mental health, things like that. Uh, Angel Reese mental health. 
to be in the news, you know, to be this famous and stuff like this. Um, and people like, you know, kind of figuring out, finding out that you allegedly, you know, don't have the best grades. You know, that's embarrassing, bro. Like, at the end of the day, you can't have all the money in the world. Like, you still a 21-year-old, 22-year-old college student that has, like, bad grades. Like, you know, I think at any point in school, like, I don't care how lit you are, you know, it's always going to be an ego thing if you're a competitive person that, you know, you're not you're not doing well in, in class or doing well at anything in life, you know, in, in any pocket, you know, it might be like, uh, it's, you look weird in the shoes or, or you look weird in clothes because, you know, your body types might be, you haven't found the right fit. So that might be an ego thing for you that hurts or like, because you're not the best, you know, dress or you're not the best uh, um, in academics, you're not the best in this. No one wants to be last place. No one wants to be consider dumb and have a one seven gpa and you know every time you speak they like at least i don't have a one five you know at least i have a gpa over 2.3 you know what i'm saying like no kid wants that you know what i'm saying so i don't know yeah yeah so prayers up to angel reese prayers up to az um that she gets through this um just in terms of hold on let me pause this before i get copyrighted uh shout out to az for her mental health of getting over the mental hurdle of, you know, continuously it feels like hurting her knee, you know what I'm saying? Hurting her knees, injuring her knees and dealing with knee issues and stuff like that. I, <coughs> excuse me, a, AZ's, you know, like what, 20, 21, you know what I'm saying? So that's a lot to take mentally when you already, you know, messed up your knee in high school, came in and, you know, you've always kind of had issues with the knee and or the so-and-so or some or injury, injuries in general, that's a tough mental hurdle to get over. So, you know, I just hope that AZ can get over that mental hurdle or deal with it as best as she can, you know, return it to the game of basketball because the game is a better when Paige Beckers and AZ Fudd are healthy and, and UConn is a competitive, you know, juggernaut in, in the nation, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to say that. All right, and then um, also salute to, oh, Caitlin Clark. Of course, Caitlin Clark, the face of the sport right now. Averaging 30 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. Uh, they just lost. Who they lose to? Um, they lost at Ioka, Ioka Lee in um, Kansas State. So, salute to Kansas State as well. Um, Kaylin doing it all by herself once again. I think that's a bit concerning, you know, in terms of, like, Iowa kind of contending for Final Four status and everything like that this season. Does Iowa get in over UConn? Because, you know, you're looking at, um, say, South Carolina, LSU, and UCLA make the final four. Okay, you got you got your Notre Dame that we mentioned. You got <coughs> you have UConn. You have uh uh you know it's, it's a couple other programs and stuff like that. I'm sorry, I'm trying to blink right now. Uh, your Notre Dame. I mentioned Notre Dame and stuff like that as, as a sleeper candidate to get hot at the right time because they have that big three. But you know what I'm saying like, do you see one of those teams? Do you see Iowa beating out UConn as that Final Four spot if South Carolina, UCLA, and LSU are kind of locked in for the Final Four? Do you see Iowa beating out of UConn again to get to the Final Four this year? I don't know. We'll have to see. So, I, I don't know as of right now, though. Okay, let's look at some of the, the leaders. Shout out to Destiny Leo over there at Cleveland State. Shout out to Izzy Higginbottom representing the Sun Belt, the Fun Belt. You know, I'm a product of the Fun Belt. Uh, speaking of, uh, salute to Marshall. I don't think Marshall's, no, Marshall's not Sun Belt. Anyway, I don't know. I don't, I don't think Marshall's Sun Belt right now. I know Georgia State plays Marshall a lot. That's why I'm like, are they Sun Belt now? But uh, shout out Marshall as well. Number three in the country in scoring. Uh, Talia Scott over there at Arkansas doing it. Uh, Hannah, we shout out her out. Uh, FAU, shout out FAU, and then shout out Zay Green. You know, you gotta shout out Zay Green, give her her flowers. She's been playing college basketball since like phew, the Obama administration. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just kidding. But yeah, Zay Green, um, she hopped around to different schools, to a couple different schools. She's been in the swipe for a couple years now. I believe she was at Grambling for a year or four season and then went over to Arkansas Pine Bluff like last year started off at Tennessee you know so salute to Zay Green uh, hooping still showing the world she can hoop bro 
I hope she gets an opportunity in on our professional level. Salute to Alexis Morris and um and Kennedy Carter for what they're doing overseas right now. I hope they can get back in the league and you know pull things together, things of that nature. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me see who else I want to shout out. Who else do I need? Oh, yeah. Shout out to Pow Pow over there in South Carolina, too, bringing the shooting to South Carolina. Okay, Jackson State. Jackson State leading the country in scoring. Shout out to Tamika Reed. Got them girls right. Shout out Mississippi State on the other end. Shout out to, uh, I think, Sam's over there, right? Sam, uh, salute to Mississippi State. Shout out to Rakia Jackson. I, I know Rakia's at... Um, Tennessee now, but you know, shout out to Kia Jackson. Kia, well, Rakia Jackson, what in the world? Kia Jackson. Um, and then Jackson State in the top 10 in both offense and defense. Didn't um, Gremlin State just beat Arizona State too? The SWAT, the SWAT got some teams this year, man. SWAT got some teams. Don't be surprised if uh, whoever wins the SWAT wins a, wins, a ch- uh, wins a game in the tournament this year. I know I said that a couple years ago with Jackson State when they had, um, when they had the girl who used to play for uh, Amisha Williams, when they had Amisha Williams, and it was her last year at Jackson State, and she was dominating all season. She was an SEC caliber player, and then they went against uh, LSU. They had that size for LSU and everything, and they went toe to toe with them. <coughs> Gave them a good run for their money in that first round, and I said, I said, look, I think whoever wins this fight this year might win an NCAA ch- uh, uh, game tournament game. You know what I'm saying? So, you heard it here first. I'm Rashad Milligan. This is the World of 5K Subs. If you are new to the channel, it's been over 30 minutes. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed the ride and hear me ramble and go through uh, my thoughts about college basketball. I'm sorry I've been going for a little minute. And uh, to everybody with the culture and stuff, I'm, I'm going to release some stuff in the next couple of days. I just had to get my people right first, send my people straight check in with my folks in the community over here uh, on this channel. So, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Like and comment. If, if you feel like it, you don't have to, but all right, peace.